Hi everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we're going to make two separate bowls from these two beautiful maple pearls. One in, with pearl red, the other one with blue laguna and rainbow blue for a commissioned set of bowls from Marty. Just like all castings that I do, the wood needs to be prepared prior to the resin going in. So here I'm removing the bark and later on you'll see me actually using a wire brush to clean the surface and to give the surface a tooth for the resin to bond to. But of course it's important to get rid of all this bark because the resin typically doesn't like to bond to bark. Well it'll bond to it, but you'll end up having soft spots in your bowl. So since the bottom of this piece is pretty much missing there's there's a lot of voids in the bottom of it i just decided to put in template on the top of it and then round it on my bandsaw so that it would fit inside my buckets also i don't know if you noticed but that last burl that i cut on the bandsaw there was actually a chainsaw mark on the top of it so you know when i put this in the bucket i i didn't really want that incorporated into our final casting so you'll see when i pour the resin that it's it's actually below that level so here i've got a brass brush mounted in the jacob's jacob's chuck that's on my lathe and i one of the reasons why I really like using this brass brush is not only does it get rid of the bark, it also scores the wood, the surface of the wood, and that gives the resin a, a surface to bond to. Now, if you peel off some of this bark and you rub your hands across the surface of this wood, this dried wood, it's actually quite smooth. And adhesion can be possibly an issue. So it's important to score up the surface of that wood so that the resin has a good tooth to bond to. And there you go, all ready for the casting bucket. You can see some numbers on the bottoms of these castings, around the bottoms of these burls. And these were in my kiln, and I was recording the weight. And then after they stopped losing weight, then I knew, after about a week, I knew they were ready for casting. This is a way around, if you don't have a moisture meter, this is a way that you can determine if your wood is dry and ready for casting. This week we're going to be using the deep casting epoxy from Designer Epoxy. Uh, there's some of the, both of these are actually fairly deep, so it's important to use a deep casting epoxy. There's the rainbow blue. I decided to combine Blue Laguna with it, equal equal amounts. I think I do add an, an extra um, rainbow blue later on, and of course the pearl red. Scraping those sidewalls in the bucket is very important, along with it at the bottom. There I noticed that it just wasn't a deep enough color for me, so I added another spoonful of the rainbow blue. Now I debated on putting some more mother of pearl in this, but I was worried about turning it pinky, so that's why I stayed away from it. Decided to put the red in this one. I don't know, I guess it really probably doesn't matter. You want one red and one blue, so this is probably not going to be enough, but we'll see. Yeah, probably, probably another liter, I guess, somewhere around there. I didn't have any more big rocks, so I just went out in the yard and got some of these and put it in a plastic container for a week. This is another three quarters of a liter. What do we got here for depth? About four and a half inches. Hmm. I guess I'll do another one of those, give it a little more. So if you're keeping score at home, that's three liters total. I'm assuming that this one's going to take that 
or possibly more. I guess we'll find out here. Yeah, the problem with this piece, this piece has got a lot of hollowness up underneath of it, so it's going to probably take a lot of resin. Maybe, maybe one more of these. We'll have to see. So this will bring this one to three liters as well. So we'll call it quits at that. It's a lot of resin in here. Let's hope it doesn't thermal crack. Between this and the other one. All right, I'm fortunate enough that I've got two pressure pots, so I will put these into the two pressure pots. And we'll see you guys tomorrow, in three days, I guess. I was going to say tomorrow, but you know, it's been a long day. See you in three days. All right, well, it's been three days. We're out of the pressure pots. Uh, I just took the wane off top of this. It was just sitting on the top, so it's not stuck to it. This one's stuck to it a little bit. There that is. So, we haven't really had too much of a resin drop. Here, it's probably down maybe three quarters of an inch. And um, same thing about there. I mean, these are fairly solid burl other than the voids that were in it. All right, so you'll probably remember that I didn't put any mold release in here. And the reason for that is because I totally forgot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to be into here. Uh, the last time, of course, I had a really hard time getting it out of here. And that's because the bucket had done this number with me beating on it over the last couple of years. So the casting was free, but... It wouldn't come out because the the top part of this bucket had like a bell shape to it <clears throat> so anyway I've, that's why I cut the top off of this the top portion that was about an inch thick and this should come out theoretically anyway let's find out That wasn't too bad at all. I did damage my bucket here though, so I don't know. Might be savable. Well, that's shocking. Well, it looks like we got two solid castings, so that's good. Should be some interesting figure in there. Never did really look at this one. Lots of nice swirl patterns. They're not going to be super deep, but they should be a couple of really nice bowls. Let's get our centers. That's a good center on that one. There's that one. Probably going to need to grind this down. Yeah. There's the center from, uh, from when I rounded it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if your epoxy can pour this deep without getting thermal cracking, but uh, if you're having some issues, you might want to try Desire Epoxy's Deep Cast. Because on pieces of this depth, I rarely get any thermal cracking. Instead of trying to grind all this away, 
I think we're down a good solid wood there, so that's good for there. Just need to find the center on this, and then we are ready to go to the lathe. All right, let's do the big one first. Starting off here with the 5 8 diameter Hercules and this resin was right at the perfect uh, cured state to be worked. As you can see there's lots of ribbons coming off of there so I'm not getting a lot of shattering and, and chatter and chipping out. So you know nice long uh, ribbons when you're working with the epoxy is, is actually really nice. Uh, the only major problem with it is that it just wraps around everything typically and it's, it's, it can be irritating that way. But, you know, I would sooner work castings that, you know, that you're supposed to let these sit 72 hours before you work them. But I find that, you know, typically 60, 65 hours is good. So... It's a lot easier to work these castings when they're in a little, you know, they haven't fully cured because it will take a number of days after this for the resin to actually fully cure. But, you know, it's a really, really easy turn when you can get them before um, it fully hardens up. So here I am using the 5 8 bowl gouge to get rid of the rest of that ugly burl that was on the top. Remember, there was a big saw mark in that, so it, it really had to go. Uh, I don't really typically care for castings when you can see kind of a saw mark in there. And of course, once I get down to the resin itself, then I just decided to uh, switch back to the Hercules. And you'll see that I'm putting actually a tenon on the very top of this so that because uh, we're going to core these pieces and that way I've got a way to mount it back on the lathe when I use it down the road. So like I said earlier, I'm going to core these pieces and I'm going to hold on to these pieces and I've got a, I've got a really neat idea or I think it's going to be a neat idea and I don't want to share that with you right now, but I think that it's going to be a cool idea. So we'll have to see how that pans out though. And so we're just whittling this down, trying to get our outside profile before we go to coring. Uh, again, you know, the, the resin at this state is almost got a static cling effect to it so it sticks to everything so you'll see me you know every now and then cleaning off the the lens and you know it's just it can be irritating it's a very cool thing but it can be a very irritating thing as well I also want to let you know that I'm going to be actually showing some finished pieces later on in the video. If you're looking for a Christmas gift for this special someone in your life. So there will be a few uh, pieces uh, later on in the video that are be offered up for sale. So I thought I would pass that along. I know that a lot of times people kind of skip through these videos because, you know, there's a lot of repetition here every week and I, I totally get that. So, you know, I'm just going to be quiet for a little while. Take in the sounds of the lathe and I'll talk to you in a little bit. All 
All right, I'm very happy with that. Really nice patterns in the resin. So uh, let's get the red one mounted because I plan on coring these and uh, I'm going to do that all at the same time. I plan on putting a glue block or a waste block on the bottom of each one of these castings. So that's what I'm doing here now. Just use the tailstock to help center that bowl when I reversed it. So you'll see me clean off the very bottom here, then use some 60 grit sandpaper in the drill to give us you know, a really good tooth for the uh, hot melt glue to stick to. And I find this is the best method when it comes to sticking on waste blocks on the bottom of your bowls. I should also mention that now is a good time to get rid of any drill holes that may be in the very bottom of the bowl uh, before that glue block goes on there. That way you can judge your depth appropriately. I typically let the hot melt glue sit for about 15 minutes. That way you're good and sure that, you know, it, it's hardened up to the state where you're not going to lose it off the very bottom of the bowl. So here I'm just cutting in a tenon and um, getting it ready to reverse so that we can do the corn. We were all set up for coring. I've got my Core Pro cutter in, the new style. Uh, I've got the extension in for my live center, but I can't use it until I get in here a little ways. So uh, just hopefully things don't go that way until then. And we'll get the core out of this, and I'm not gonna do anything with this today. They'll be used at a later date. This one and the blue one. Let's do it. Now, as you can see, I could have gone a little bit more to the left here, but, you know, we've still got to trim this bowl. So, you know, every time you remove this from the chuck after it's been trued up and then put it back on, it's very unlikely that it's going to run true again. So, you know, you got to make sure that you've got enough thickness in, you know, especially up near the very top of that bowl so that after it's reversed on the outboard end that, you know, you've got enough material there to, to turn away so that's not going to really affect your, the overall size of your bowl. Um, 
of people keep asking, like, why do I turn on the outboard into my lathe? And, you know, this is more or less for the new people that have come on, come on board. And, you know, it, you know, I'm, I'm getting somewhere around about every six weeks, about 5,000 subscribers. So that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. But the reason that I turn on the outboard into my lathe is because I'm left-handed. And this lathe has left-hand threads on the outboard end. And that allows me to turn comfortably on the outboard, on the outboard end of my lathe anyway. So here we are, it's reversed and you can't really see it, but this piece is easily out an eighth of an inch at the very top. So, you know, if you don't have that thickness to turn away to true it up again, then you're in trouble. So that's why I prefer to err on the side of caution when I'm, when I'm coring out these pieces. Yes, I could have got a larger core, but really the money bowl is the thing you should be concerned about and not the core as much. And I've said this before and I'll say it again that typically I want my my resin casted bowls here to be three eighths to a half inch in diameter and thickness. That's that's what I'm shooting for. You know, you you if you go really thin on these pieces, then you know you're really kind of uh, the the less bonding surface that you have for that resin the more likelihood that you're going to have issues. So that's why I really don't like to see my castings any thinner than a half inch to three, three eighths of an inch in thickness. So, you know, by all means, you can share your thoughts on that. Uh, I just, I like to make pieces that are robust. First of all, I am not your typical turner when it comes to making thin turnings. I really like a hefty, turning so that sidewall thickness is right up my alley just getting ready to take some finishing cuts here on the bowl before we go to sanding and you know you can see those fine little shavings are exactly what you want and as long as you can get those you're probably going to cut that surface nice and clean here we're sanding with the three and a half inch dimple disc from sandpaper.ca and I'll remind you that there is a link in the description to sandpaper.ca where you can get 10% off your order. That's the same for Desire, Epoxy, Hunter Tool Systems, and Starbond Adhesives. Starbond Adhesives, you actually have a 15% off when you uh, order using code InlayGem at checkout. Here we're just buffing with the Triple E buffing compound, and that's spelled Triple E as in the city, not E E E. And then the last little bit is to use some denatured alcohol to clean the surface before the first coat finish goes on. Well, how's everybody doing? It is the first coat of Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. Now, I was talking to Mike on the phone yesterday. I won't give you his last name. And he says, you know, I actually put him on to Waterlux. And he says what he's using is a brush and he's putting on really super heavy and then letting the lathe rotate afterwards, uh, just like you would with a resin coat. So, you know, he, you know, he's saying that he's doing it all in one coat instead of doing multiple coats. So, you know, I'm a creature of habit and this is the way that I've always put finishes on bowls. But we're going to have to try Mike's method and see how we make out in the future. What do you think of that? Love these little burl islands that are in there. Awesome. And that resin is spectacular, I must say. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Got some spalting action going on. 
Lots of shitoyants. It's all there. Next one coming up. By far, what I really like about working with the resin is taking pieces of burl like this that, you know, there's no way you could turn that, that burl. Like, it was just so, there were so many pieces of it missing that, you know, it was firewood. And in the end, you've got, you know, these 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 pieces that have islands in them. You know, it, you know, it looks like it's in a Red Sea on some distant planet. You know, it's just a very, very cool effect that is really only achievable with epoxy. You know, I know there's a lot of epoxy haters out there. And, you know, we all have our thing. But, you know, I just, for me, it has really allowed me to be so creative and I'm so glad that I've actually found the resin uh, to be perfectly honest with you doing natural inlays which I was really known for before even starting YouTube because I've been doing natural inlays for oh I don't know over 20 years you know it, it just really really allows you to be so creative and you know it's awesome if you haven't tried it you really should because you can really do so much with it you just can't do with anything else. there's another one with lots of islands and look at the size I mean look at how small that was before and look at the size of it now same thing with the red pearl one I mean again that those pearl pigments are just spectacular awesome piece I should keep it I oh, just kidding all right we'll see you tomorrow for the second coat uh, if you're curious, that took me eight hours. Uh, it was a full eight-hour day with no breaks. See you tomorrow. So I've got a few things for sale. I know there's been a lot of people that uh, have sent me emails and said, look, can you make this for me? Uh, I'll cover this in a second, but I thought I'd show you this. What I did was I ordered a couple of smaller, well, there's a smaller vacuum chuck than the one that I have. So I believe this is the three and a half inch. Let me see. Yeah. So it comes with a neoprene seal and then this former. So you, you peel the, the backside off of this and put it on there and then put this piece on there and put it under vacuum and it forms it around the vacuum drum, which is very cool. And um, so anyway, you can also get these seal packs and packs of five. So there's the one that I have. I have the five inch already. And then uh, there's another pack of seals for the three and a half inch, the small one, and the eight inch. And this is a beast here, let me tell you. So again, same process. Uh, this will really definitely hold a good vacuum. And uh, the former, that goes along with it as well. So you put it on like that after you peel the, uh, the sticky side off the back. So I thought that I would show that. Uh, they also come with these tools to remove them from your lathe. And of course, all these different adapters for every lathe that's on the market you can get from one way. So when you order the chuck, you, uh, you'll obviously need to order the adapter to fit your lathe. And uh, so I'm looking forward to using, especially this smaller one, because I'm finding I'm, I'm, I have a need for uh, to hold smaller stuff on the lathe, and, and this should do a better job of it with not as much um, leakage with some of the other kind of jigs that I've made, if you will. So moving on to bowls that I have available. This is the Who Wants Candy Bowl set. Uh, there's been some interest in it, but, you know, I haven't really let it be known that I have it. But of course there's three pieces. Um, so anyway, I will give you the price on this and it's kind of, this is a blowout sale. 
350 bucks is what I want for this plus the shipping. And if it's sold in Canada, taxes of course would be on that. This is the double walnut crotch piece, hollow form. If you remember, there's the pig's nose or the set of eyes, if you will. I, again, probably the reason why I have this is because I really haven't been trying to sell it, <laughs> to be straight up honest with you. Uh, but anyway, that, so everybody knows, is probably in the $800 range. That's, that's what I would be willing to let that go, plus shipping, of course. And this was made on the channel as well. Four leaf clover action happening for you there. And um, again, that's $240. I think that that's a steal as well. Now, for those of you who don't like any inlays, this is or any resin work. This is just a piece of plain Jane spalted maple. And at 80 bucks, that's all I want for that piece. In the back, these are catalpa. And um, pretty much all of these bowls, including this one, are pre-COVID stock. And since I haven't really been doing any shows, you know, it's <laughs> I'm not big on keeping my website uploaded and maintained, as you probably would know. But anyway, there's different soapstones. There's a light colored so soapstone in that one. Um, the, all of these bowls here, these are all 120. All of these bowls right here just so everybody knows. And um, that one there has just got a little figure finger filled in on it. That's about a medium colored soapstone there. And it's also got a nice little inlay in it too on the side. Again, this is a black soapstone. And uh, this has got the black soapstone in it again. And there were some wormholes and they filled those. One on the side here too. And the lighting's not the best, sorry about that. If you're interested in this piece, just call it the shotgun bowl. <laughs> then we'll all know. And this is the only piece of birch I've got. And it's got a little brass inlay in the top here. If I can get the light to hit it correctly. There it is. Just a small little brass in uh, birch inlay. And it's 140, it's a larger bowl. And this is really the last one. This is uh, maple and this is apple green resin and it is $260. Plus shipping and taxes if sold in Canada. Anyway, if anybody's interested in these pieces, Please send me an email to spragwoodturning at gmail.com and uh, I'll get these mailed out to you. Let's get back on the lathe. This is the next day and just like I do with all of the coats of finish, I always buff with the triple E buffing compound then clean it with denatured alcohol before the next coat of finish goes on. All right, this is the second coat of Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. Well, there's the second coat. Two might do it. Man, I love that burl. Pretty awesome stuff. All right, let's do the blue one. There you go. The way that's covering two might do it. Anyway, if there's a third, I will do it the same way. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's an absolutely beautiful piece. See you when we're doing the foot. I wasn't going to show this, but some might find it interesting. This is how you form the seals. I didn't actually get it on there as good as I wanted to. 
I do find that the seal tends to lift on the outer edge, so I usually tape it down with either electrical tape or duct tape. And that bigger chuck, it's got a lot of power. I'm pulling though, I'm pulling on that with full force and I cannot rip that off of there. So of course the bigger the chuck, the more uh, vacuum you're able to pull. And you know, if you had the 12 inch one, well, holy, I mean, it would, you've got to be really careful because if you're, if the bottom of your bowls are on the thinner side of the house, you may possibly end up ruining them uh, either by pulling completely through it or collapsing the bottom of the bowl. So if you do get one of these big chucks, sometimes you may have to regulate how much vacuum you're actually pulling on the piece or you possibly could destroy it. All right, let's finish this video up. All right, so let's have a last little chat about these beautiful bowls that I made for Marty. Boys, I'm, you know, you know me with those, those pearl pigments with the blue. I mean, spectacular. I will do some footage with it lit above, hopefully. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call this, these two bowls. I think maybe the, the island bowls or something. Just working with those gnarly pieces of wood, you just, <laughs> you, you get the coolest looking turnings. There's the very bottom, super busy. As you can see, there's no finish on the bottom. It is signed, uh, but it's so busy, it's really hard to pick out, but it's right along here. But uh, I try to stay off the resin when I'm signing, if at all possible. Uh, this piece here is 10 and a half inches across and three and a quarter inches tall. And it is uh, by far way up there on my favorites. That's for sure. I wasn't kidding when I said I should keep. Here's the smaller red one. And again, very cool resins and I mean this this will be really nice when it's lit from above as well and again you've got some burl islands very cool this one's a little easier to read on the bottom you know again I'm out of time so didn't get a chance to put a coat of finish on them I'll do that after I shoot this video and this piece is, I get this written down, nine inches across and three and a half inches tall. And you know, it, both of these are way up there on my, on my burl scale as far as what I've done with resin so far. I'm really, really happy about that. And um, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about these two beautiful bowls. Hopefully uh, Marty and whoever he's given these to will love them because I certainly do. That's for sure. And of course, don't forget to put designer epoxy all by itself to be entered into the three gallon giveaway kit. Uh, yeah, three gallon giveaway kit at 80,000 subscribers. And of course, that's only for Canada and the lower, lower 48 US states. Sorry, everybody else. We just can't ship there. Um, next week is going to be if it works out, it might be one of the more cooler hollow forms that I've ever done. And I'm thinking that it's, I don't know, we'll have to, we'll have to see how it goes. But anyway, I think that it's going to be a really cool thing. So please come on back for that. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment down below to be entered into the bowl giveaway. Bowl giveaways are every 5,000 subscribers. So all I ask is you can leave a comment down below and you'll be entered into the draw. <clears throat> All right, well, that's it. Till next week, take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. Smile. See you next week.